Encryption market is heating up. They found a toddler aged malware. Let's talk about it on this week's episode of ThreatWire. In 2022, the US government via NIST released their selections of encryption tools designed to handle post-quantum computation. After two years, we are finally seeing companies start to implement these results. In our last episode of ThreatWire, we shared that Apple released their write-up on PQ3, their answer to post-quantum encryption and the deployment into new iOS versions. Since then, we've seen a few major press announcements around post-quantum. Germany-based email provider Tuta Mail released this week that they are now post-quantum, implementing NIST-approved Crystals Kyber for encapsulation, X25519 for elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange, and are keeping the current AES256 slash Argon2 cryptography in place for current threats. One thing I never talk about here, but if you know me, you know I love a good startup. So when I saw that a new startup raised $73 million for encryption, it felt so in line to cover as a part of the story. A French-based startup by the name of Zuma raised $73 million to commercialize fully homomorphic encryption. From my understanding, fully homomorphic encryption enables getting information about data without actually knowing what the data is. Finally, Google released their approach to thinking about the threats and their threat model. The opening paragraph sums up why people are thinking about these issues now. A new threat. If we do not encrypt our data with a quantum secure algorithm right now, an attacker who is able to store current communication will be able to decrypt it in as soon as a decade. This store now decrypt later attack is the main motivator behind the current adoption of post-quantum cryptography, PQC. But other future quantum computing threats also require a well thought out plan for migrating our current classical cryptographic algorithms to PQC. If you want to read Google's write up and see what you may be able to apply to your job right now, the blog post is linked below. Do you ever just oops your way into something else? That's basically what the researchers at Checkpoint Research did while exploring the Avanti Connect Secure VPN vulnerabilities. In this research, they found a recurring character. The threat actor, dubbed Magnet Goblin, is fast acting, implementing breaking exploits into their menagerie with breakneck speeds, as fast as a one day turnaround from seeing proof of concept. Using these exploits, they deploy a Nerbian family of remote access Trojans, or RIT, across platforms, named Nerbian Rat and Mini Nerbian. Nerbian Rat was first discovered in 2022 on Windows systems by Proofpoint. At that point, it was found to be extremely well hidden, but the version Checkpoint Research Team found while running on Linux basically had none of the hiding features or reverse engineering protections. After quickly finding the rat, researchers were able to easily pull variable and function names, as well as build a strong understanding of how the Trojan works. Checkpoint Research has listed their indicators of compromise on their blog post, so please be sure to check out for any potential activity on your systems. A few years ago, I read an article that a majority of cybersecurity incidents are human caused. Looking back for the article, it was a Stanford research paper that said that 88% of all data breaches are caused by human error. The Cyber Express recently published a report and they found that almost 60% of cybersecurity professionals with two to five years of experience admit to making mistakes at work. It was found to be also very common with nearly half of all people not feeling comfortable in their job within the first year, usually taking two to three years to feel competent. So if you're feeling like me, just about one year into your job, just know it's gonna be okay. The secret is that we all don't know what's going on, but According to the study linked in the article, if you're looking to get hired in the cybersecurity space, make sure you brush up on your cloud computing skills. Hiring managers are looking for people with cloud skills, but not many IT people have them. This can definitely help you stand out. So I have a question for y'all. What job do you have? Do you work in cybersecurity or are you a hobbyist? I'm asking because when writing ThreatWire, I wanna know who you are so I can better curate my stories. In addition, what are your thoughts on the more repetitive stories? Do you want me to cover data breaches and ransomware, new major CVEs that drop that have been pretty messy or aggressive like Citrix Bleed, or what about the CVEs that do drop regularly? Writing some of these stories feels a little redundant, almost cookie cutter, but I wanna know your thoughts. Do you wanna see them covered here? Also, just as a heads up, I'm gonna be participating in a malware quiz with VX Underground on their Twitch channel this Friday. So if you wanna come check it out and cheer on me and my friends, that would be awesome. 
Also, I'm currently dog sitting this week. So this is baby, baby say hi. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for tuning into Threatwire for the week of March 11th, 2024. If you enjoyed the reporting and want to support this ad-free show, please be sure to check out our Patreon over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Thank you so much, and we literally could not do this show without you. Until next time, this is Baby. I'm Allie Diamond. You can find me everywhere at Ending With Allie. So good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.